So the next thing that we need to do though is I want to get your local workstation configured to speak to or connected with ops code hosted chef. So okay. let's go back to your command line for a quick second. Mm -hmm. And on the command line, one of the tools that you'll use or the tool that you'll use primarily with chef is a tool called knife. So what I'd mm -hmm. like you to do is enter knife space client space list. Client list. Uh, yeah, but you need spaces, not dashes there. So it should be, three, uh, th oh yeah, there you go, there you go. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So well, now it's... Maybe, uh, first, uh, uh, small orientation, because I was confused when I was reading about Knife. So Knife is on the workstation. It's very important, isn't it? It is extremely important, and it absolutely is on the workstation, yes. So it's not to be on the servers uh, which you will provision by Chef later. That's correct. You want Knife installed and running and you'll use knife from your local workstation uh, okay. but, but the servers on which you're going to use are, are that are going to be configured by chef will use the chef client so knife okay. it, knife itself is actually a client of the chef server api as okay. is chef client but okay. uh, they definitely have different sort of use cases and so as you as you stated knife is the tool for your local development with the chef server it will be running on your workstation okay great mm -hmm. okay so now we saw that there was an error there when knife ran and it, what it's saying is that it can't find your private key now this is because mm -hmm. we haven't yet configured your knife to connect to ops code hosted chef okay you, you see here that your private key it looks by default in etsy chef client pem we're not mm -hmm. going to use that directory. What we're going to do instead is make a new directory here mm -hmm. in your chef repo, and we're going to call it dot chef. Okay. Okay, now let's go. The nice thing about uh, hosted chef is it's actually going to give you the files that are required to go into the dot chef directory. Let's take okay. a look for those. So let's go mm -hmm. back to your hosted chef. Mm hmm. And there are going to be a couple of files that we need here. Mm -hmm. So I'm just waiting. I think the video is lagging a bit. Let, let me... Uh, ah, okay. There we go. Good. Okay. Yeah. So you are currently here on Hosted Chef. Uh, if you scroll over towards the right, again at the top, you'll see your organization name. Okay. Or sorry, the organization's mm -hmm. link. Let's go ahead and click on the organization's yeah. link. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, there are three files that you're going to need for your knife to connect properly to this uh, hosted chef account. The mm -hmm. first is your knife config. So there you see a link called generate knife config. Ah, okay. Let's yeah. go ahead and click that. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's going to download a file for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have it here. Yep. Yeah. And let's also regenerate the validation key while we're here. Mm -hmm. We're just going to grab all three files okay. and then we'll move them to the appropriate location mm -hmm. and then uh, okay uh, and I'll explain what each of them is in just a moment let's also click on your username there towards the top where it says mm -hmm. logged in as mm -hmm. Mulder P mm -hmm. and then scroll down toward oh actually click on the change password link uh, yep yeah. and then scroll to the bottom of the page there ah uh, okay and you'll see get a new key so go ahead and do that mm-hmm Ah, okay. Okay. So what you need to do next is move those three files into your .chef directory. If you can do that, I'll just explain what each one of them mm -hmm. does here. Yeah. So the first thing that we downloaded was our knife configuration file. This is a file that we'll look at in a moment, but it's going to tell knife uh, all of its pertinent details. So exactly which chef server it should connect to, which keys it should use, and so forth. The second thing we downloaded was the Fedor Validation PEM. This is uh, a key that will give the client, in, in our case, uh, Knife, will give the client access to this organization. And then the final key is Patrick's individual user key, or is MulderP.PEM. So mm -hmm. this is what allows or, or authenticates you with the chef oh. server. Now let's mm -hmm. go ahead and try that knife client list command again. Mm -hmm. 
now that you've copied those three files there. Mm -hmm. And I expect to see one client come back now, and it should be the validator. Ah, cool. Yeah. Okay, so what this tells us is that you now have your local workstation configured to talk to your hosted chef account. Let's mm -hmm. go ahead and take a look at the knife.rb if you want to just open that up in your favorite editor, whether that's okay. Emacs, <laughs> Vim, TextMate, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's take a look at what this says here. <clears throat> so, of course, knife.rb is itself a Ruby file. So the first thing it does is it sets up this current dir, uh, which uh, sets the current directory variable for us. You see here that it's uh, the other important details. First, uh, the chef server URL. So this tells us that this knife configuration is going to be used to connect to your Fedor organization on the hosted chef site. Mm -hmm. And then it will also show the validation credentials. So the validation key and the validation client name, as well as your individual client key, which is Mulder. Uh, Mulder okay. mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's with these three files that I can now connect successfully to Hosted Chef. Mm -hmm. so, okay. so Patrick, what we've done so far is you've registered with Hosted Chef and you've mm -hmm. configured your local workstation to communicate with your Hosted Chef account. Mm -hmm. We put these three files in your .chef directory within this within your current directory. Exactly. Now, Chef itself, or Knife, will actually look for these files in one of three different locations. The first place it will look is in the current directory. It will look for a .chef directory. If it finds one there, that's the files that it will use. Mm -hmm. Next, it will look in your home directory for a .chef directory, and then okay. it will use those. And then finally, it will default to Etsy Chef uh, slash Etsy slash chef, and that's where it will mm -hmm. look then at the end, which is the error that we saw at the first time we ran this. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, any questions so far? Uh, no, this is fine. One small, so for every um, organization, I would add to this, I get, I put this key into the chef directory. Yes, if you add additional organizations, uh, or if you start working with additional organizations, you'll actually need to set up uh, a different knife RB mm -hmm. and have a different validator PEM. Because, of course, okay. the, remember the knife RB tells the knife uh, client which PEMs to use, so which validator to use, as well as the URL to connect to. Uh, or the, okay. So if you were connecting, and, and as we saw in the knife RB, the URL includes the organization name. So if you wanted mm -hmm. to connect to a different organization, you would need a completely different knife RB. You would continue okay. to use your Mulder P dot PEM mm -hmm. regardless because that's that's your hosted chef account for you individually. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. 